Hi, Nick. Uh, Greg Anderson from Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, I was uh, just watching a video, and uh, you had mentioned about capped ranges. Uh, if you can explain how we can put somebody on a capped range and uh, how to go about doing that, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, this is a great question about capped hand ranges. So first things first, a capped hand range is one that does not include very strong hands. So as you start moving up in the hand range from medium strength to stronger hands, it stops. There are no strong hands in that hand range. That's what we mean by a hand range that is capped. And it is not necessarily the case that there are zero strong hands, that they never have any strong hands. But for the most part, it's pretty unlikely that they have any strong hands in their range when they have a capped hand range. So how do we identify that at the table? Well, typically it's gonna be when your opponent takes a passive action, uh, they either check or they just call in a spot where they would have bet or raised if they had a strong hand. And so one of the most common spots that you'll see this is preflop when you see people limp into the pot or call after other callers, a lot of times it means that they don't have any strong hands. And this is kind of at the heart of one of our moves when we talk about, especially in tournament play, attacking limpers. When there are multiple limpers at the table, each subsequent limper is less and less likely to have a strong hand, and that makes sense. If you were at the table and you saw several limpers in front of you and you had a hand like ace-king or two queens or two kings, you would most likely raise with that hand and you should raise with that hand. So when you limp behind other limpers in that case, your hand range is capped. You don't have all those strong hands in it. So when you have those multiple limpers at the table, uh, you can raise against those limpers, and you're really only worried about that first limper, maybe the second limper, but as you go down the line, each player is more and more capped in their hand range. And so the same idea can be applied to post-flop play as well. When an opponent checks or calls in a situation where they would have bet or raised if they had a big hand, then that's a signal that their hand range may be capped. And just like with pre-flop play, when you spot a capped hand range post-flop, that should be a cue to you to bet or raise more frequently, to use bigger bet sizing. Uh, against a capped hand range, you are more able to exert aggression, both with made hands as well as your bluffs. 